Okay, this is one more look at exercise 16. I'm just going to show you one more example of a proof that would work for this particular statement. So I'm going to show you a proof by contradiction. Now when you're doing a proof by contradiction with an implication, the idea is to assume the negation of that statement, prove that the negation of that statement is false. If the negation of a statement is false, then I know the original statement is true. So I just want to make sure that you understand this here. Okay. So we've got an if-then statement here, right? Now, if I know that the negation of this is false, then it must be true that the original statement is true. Okay? So this is what we're trying to prove. Now we need to know a little bit more about the negation of implication. Okay? So you should know that this is the same as P and not Q. Okay? So that's what I've done here, written out my P and not Q. So my P is M is even, and then I'm also going to assume M is odd. I'm also going to assume that N is odd. So I'm going to assume all this at once and then find that they can't all be true. So my negation of my statement is false, so my original statement is true. So uh, let me kind of write out here what I'm going to do. So I'm going to make three assumptions. I'm going to make an assumption that M, N is even. If that's true, I know m times n is equal to 2 times some integer k. I'm also going to assume n m is odd, which tells me m is 2 times some integer plus 1. I'm also going to assume n is odd, which tells me that n is equal to 2 times, let's say, t plus 1. Okay? So what's going to happen is if I take the product of these, right? is going to be, this is going to be an odd integer, right? If I take the product of two odd integers. But that's going to contradict our assumption that m times n is an even integer, and thus the negation of the statement must be false, and it must be true that our original statement is true. So that's kind of the outline here. That's what we're going to do. So let's get started in the write-up. Again, right? This went a lot faster in the little couple minutes I've been talking to you than it would in real life, right? Um, just take some time to think through. You've got to understand your hypothesis and conclusion. You've got to understand what you're assuming. You've got to understand all these definitions and how they could be connected and contradict each other. So take some time, okay? All right, so let me write up the proof here. We're doing a proof by contradiction. And let's see, we're going to say let m and n be integers, okay? So we know where we're living with this proof, okay? And I'm going to say assume for contradiction m times n is an even integer. m is an odd integer, and n is an odd integer. By definition, of odd integers, m is equal to 2k plus, well, let's, I'll stay consistent with my variables I used up there, but it doesn't really matter, and n is equal to 2t plus 1. Then m times n is equal to 2l plus 1 times 2t plus 1, which is equal to 4LT plus 2L plus 2T plus 1, which is equal to 2 times L, 2LT plus L plus T plus 1. Thus, by definition of odd integers, if 
m and n are odd integers. m times n is an odd integer. And here's our contradiction, right? This contradicts our assumption that m times n is an even integer. Hence, it is not the case that m times n is an even integer. m is an even integer, an odd integer. And n is an odd integer. integer. That's it. Okay, because we've proven that it's not the case that this negation is true, I know that my original statement is true. So I have a clear hypothesis, which is that the negation is true, and I have a clear conclusion that the negation is not true, okay? So, and I also, in a proof by contradiction, I should have a very clear contradiction, right? So my clear contradiction here is that m times n is odd.